This question comes to us from Chris. How do you cut down the spin on your second serve and increase speed? I feel my serve has too much spin and not enough speed. So Chris, we're gonna talk about specifically exactly how to kind of turn the dial or turn the knob a little bit between speed and spin on your second serve. Congrats on being able to hit so much spin. A lot of players would love to have that problem. So this phrase I use a ton in my coaching, the face sends it, the path bends it. What that means is at contact, wherever the strings are facing, the ball is gonna go in that direction. And whatever direction the racket is moving in, the path of the racket determines how much and what kind of spin is on the ball. And so something really important that I want you to consider is that the pros on their second serve, the ball doesn't move as fast on their second serve on average, but they swing just as quickly. Their racket is moving just as fast, but the ball doesn't. And that's because they swing in a different direction. And so if we know that and understand that, then we can basically fine tune the amount of speed and the amount of spin that's on our serve or any other shot in tennis for that matter. So let's look at a, a case study here, uh, an example of Tim Smichek, a uh, name maybe you recognize. He was a top 100 uh, American player a couple years ago. And I spent some time with him recording serves uh, a while back. And we're gonna look at a couple different factors here. This is a, a flat serve that Tim hit to the T on the other side. And so we're gonna look at the path of the racket, we're gonna look at how his body is aligned, and we're gonna look at how the racket is facing at contact. So we already know the ball is gonna go here, like literally just barely touch the line on the other side. So look at where his body is facing, look at where his strings are facing. So his body is angled into the courts a little bit, it's not facing his target, this is a really key factor in hitting a high quality serve is you don't want your body facing your target. It should be a little bit sideways at contact. Look at all the strings are facing right down the middle of the court. And now let's watch the path of the racket. The racket's coming up from behind the ball and then turning and releasing, aka snapping, through contact towards his target. It's not 100% in line with the center of the court but it's very, very close. And he's releasing the racket right through the ball, right towards his target. And so that means that all the acceleration that he's uh, built up through his racket, all the way up through his body, through his arm, through the racket, into the ball, all that energy is being delivered straight through the ball, straight towards his target. And that's what makes it a flat serve. That's what makes it not have a lot of spin. And so that means Tim here, this is basically his fastball. His flat serve is going to be the serve that travels through the court the fastest. So this is way over on one end of the spectrum. This is how you hit the ball as fast as possible. Square racket, direct path, right towards the target. This is how you hit a fastball and hit the ball as fast as possible. Okay, so now that we've looked at that, let's look at the same player on the same day hitting the same target with a kick serve. So you can see the ball kicking, uh, literally kicking up and to the right on the, the other side, watch the bounce, and then the kick up to the right. He didn't hit exactly the same target, but it's, it's down the tee. And so let's backtrack here. Let's look at his body position at contact. And you'll see that here, now his body's facing a little bit more sideways. And the reason why his body is a little bit more sideways is because watch the path of the racket. Now, if we, if we draw a line uh, from contact straight down the middle of his racket and look at the path now, look at how the racket starts on the left side of the line and swings way over to the right side of the line. So this is a very different path of racket. Remember, the face sends it, the path bends it. So if his path is going this way, instead of towards his target, then it means he's gonna make a whole bunch of spin. This is what makes a kick serve a kick serve. His racket is traveling upwards at contact and also out to the side. So that's why when the ball hits the other side of the court, it kicks up and to the right. Whoops, I hit the wrong thing. That's why the ball does this on the other side is because right at contact, his racket is moving up 
and out to the side. And so that's what puts the spin on the ball. <clears throat> now, little point of clarification here. I had a, like a comment uh, discussion back and forth with a viewer a couple weeks ago about this phrase. You'll notice that the racket face is actually angled a little bit more to the left. It's not exactly towards his target. His target is down the T, and his racket is angled a little bit more to the left than the T. And that's to account for all the energy of the racket moving past the ball to the right really aggressively does influence the ball to the right a little bit. But it doesn't have nearly as much influence over where the ball goes as the angle of the racket face. So just a little point of clarification there. The path of the racket when you're hitting a ton of spin does influence the ball and does change the direction of the ball a little bit in that direction, whatever direction the racket's moving. But the angle of the strings is by far, the, like you're never gonna see the strings pointing this way and the ball go you know, that way, like a, a 90 degree difference. But will, what you will see is the racket path going this way and the ball going that way. So ultimately that's what makes spin is the path. That's how you hit a flat serve. That's how you hit a kick serve. That's how you hit every type of serve in between. So let's go back to our, our notes here. So, so what does this mean? Let's just kind of make a, a statement of fact and then talk about exactly how you adjust this to hit anything you want in between. So for maximum spin, we want the body more sideways at contact and the path more sideways at contact. The body is a little more sideways so that the body can send the racket off to the side and create tons and tons of spin. So if you're making more spin than you want right now, it means you're probably overdoing this part of it. Your path is a little too sideways and your body is probably facing a little bit too sideways. On the other hand, <clears throat> for maximum ball speed, we want the body facing a little more forwards so that we can send the racket on a flatter, straighter path forwards towards the target through the ball. And that's how we hit the fastest shot possible. So what we just looked at was kind of two ends of the spectrum and you can do anything in between. So if you want like 80% pace or speed and you want 20% spin, then you can totally do that. You just maintain most of your forward position and most of your relatively forward position. Uh, don't ever face literally forwards with your, your body. Keep most of your relatively forward position and most of your relatively forward path and just go out to the side a little bit more. And you'll hit a lot of pace and a little bit of spin. Or if you wanna add a little bit of pace to a really spinny serve, then keep most of your sideways path, but start swinging into the court a little bit more. And you'll hit a little bit less spin, but more pace or more power. There'll be more speed, but a little bit less spin. And there's a th thousand shades of gray in between. You can literally turn the dial, you know, one degree in, in either direction, hit a little bit more speed, a little bit more spin, or anything in between. Way more speed, way more spin. It's just a matter of practice and training and learning how to turn that dial effectively. And you can hit a million different deliveries, which is really, really cool. <clears throat>